What was a loophole that you found, and exploited the hell out of? I used to play a lot of backgammon in Yahoo games, and some people were real jerks when losing. Most commonly they'd stall the game, by taking the maximum 5 minutes per move, hoping I'd resign. I learned a way, to boot these people off Yahoo for, as long as I wanted, by trying to log into their account. When I used the wrong password 10 times, the account was locked for 24 hours. They couldn't log in again, until I chose to allow it. This was more grinding than exploitation, but it was fun. The grocery store where I lived, had a fuel card you could sign up for. If you bought certain items, you would get dollar sign. Zero one or dollar sign. Zero two off per gallon, sometimes more depending on the item or week. One week, they run a promotion, that every one of their store generics would get dollar sign. Zero two off per gallon, per item. I walk by the powdered Kool-Aid packets and notice they sell a generic version of that. 10 slash dollar sign 1 point. I do the math. My vehicle has a 16. 5 gallon tank. Gas costs 3 dollars. 14 per gallon. Each packet of drink mix costs. 10. Every packet of drink mix I buy will save me. 33 at the pump. I will need 157 packets of drink mix to get free gas. This will save me 36 dollars. 11. I should do this. So, I count out 157 little individual packets of drink mix, all kinds of flavors, and go to the checkout. I try to save the guy some time, by telling him how many there are in each flavor, but the manager had walked by, and stopped to see what was going on with the generic Kool-Aid. So, the poor guy has to scan every single one. The manager makes an awkward joke about the amount of drink mix I'm buying, but when I pull out my fuel card, my ploy becomes clear. The cashier reads off my new fuel discount, and I'm on my way to the gas station, where I proudly fuel up my vehicle, I still had to pay zero dollars. 16. They wouldn't let you reduce the price all the way to zero. Then, I took all the generic drink mix, and donated it to the local food pantry, because I hate Kool-Aid. Not truly a loophole, but I got a flyer in the mail one day from a pizza joint advertising $5 large pizzas on certain days of the week with a code that was valid for another month. I'm still using the code to this day, 3 years later. It's only worked at the local branch so far, but I've been riding that gravy train as hard as possible. By accident I found a gumball machine. If you turned the dial really slow it would drop the gumball, then you could dial it back just enough, so the next gumball would drop into the tumbler bits, then slowly dial forward again until it drops, etc. Got about 20 of them, and stopped when I realized, that I really didn't want to chew, that much cheap gum. Back when you could win a free coke under the bottle cap, I spotted a pattern where the caps that I won, had a logo on the top that looked faded, whereas the losers all looked pristine. For two weeks, every day after school I'd stop at the UDF and exchange yesterday's cap for a new coke. A few years ago, there was a promotional sample of Catford. The bag cost $3, and it had a $3 coupon inside it. The coupon did not have a weight limit on it, so I bought a big plastic bin, put it in my trunk, and for an hour, went in and out of the store filling that plastic bin, one $3 bag of cat food at a time, cashing in the $3 coupon the previous bag gave me. I'm pretty sure I only saved like $20, but as the saying goes, 20 bucks is one less blowjob I have to give for 20 bucks. When I was younger 12 to 13 I had one of those stupid timers on the computer that would only let me use the computer 2 hours a day before I got kicked. Found out that if you minimize the screen alerting you that you have ran out of time, you never run out of time. Best summer ever. This past semester, I needed to take a biology class with a lab to graduate. I was told that it was one of the easiest classes at my school to take. But as a lid type, I didn't agree much. It was so much information all at once, and I found it really boring, so I didn't do so well on the tests or assignments. I got C's and D's, even on the final which I stayed up all night to study for. We also had a class blog. There were about 120 of us, and we each had to write 3 posts per semester on anything biology related. I didn't do well in the lab section either. I failed the multiple choice test in the practical, and I assumed I was ducked. 
However, the professor said that, if we made comments on our peers' blog posts, and turned in worksheets to show what edits we made, when, and on what topic, we could get 5 extra points per edit. Most kids did 2 or 3. I did 97. Got an A for the semester. So I wanted to get cheap coffee filters online as I knew I was going to need them for the foreseeable future, and wanted to get a better price on them. So I found a site, that had them at half price $1.95 for 100 filters, usually $3.99 at the store, what I was paying at the store, and put them in my cart. When I went to check out it asked me, if I wanted to set up an automatic delivery, to have them shipped every 2 weeks and they would reduce the price. I said sure why not, after all they were the cheapest I had found, and getting them every week would mean I didn't have to keep ordering them. So it brought the price down, by like to like $1 for 100 filters. I was thrilled. Then it asked me, if I wanted to join the coffee savers program for more discounts. I said sure. So after joining the savers program it brought the price down to $0. 00. I was stunned. I still had to add my credit card, but I was never charged. So for 2 years I got 100 filters delivered to my door for free. Never got charged not once. One day though I got a notice, that said they were going out of business and my free filters were dead. I was sad. But the stockpile I amassed them lasted me about 2 years, and recently in the past 2 weeks I had to buy new filters. Life will never be the same. A long long time ago Hostess Chips was the major brand in Canada at the time, had a Mario Brothers promo. You got a bingo card in each bag of chips, and every card was a winner. You had to scratch 3 of 9 areas, and if you matched the icons you won. One of my friends figured out that using a tin can with a tiny hole punched in the bottom, and then dropped down and a 100W light bulb, you could see through the card and find the winning spots to scratch. This spread around town and a week later there wasn't a single bag of chips to be found anywhere. Sold out all over town. We all had garbage bags of open chips around. I won one grand prize which was a Super Mario Brothers game. There was a site, where you could upload your own games, and make revenue for every time someone visited the page. Turns out just refreshing the page counted as a visit, so I found an auto refresher, and left it on 24 over 7. I made almost $2000, before they figured out what was happening and now it only works from different IP addresses. Back in college we found a loophole with coupons at Kroger for General Mills cereal. If you bought 4 boxes of cereal each box was a dollar. But if you did the self checkout you would be printed out a coupon for $4 off your next purchase. We used the loophole, to buy about 300 boxes of cereal. We only spent $12 on all of it. We would spent less, but we had to go to another Kroger, once the manager got wind of us. We kept around 20 boxes for ourselves, and donated the rest to the local food bank. They were so excited, when we showed up with 3 vehicles full of cereal. Totally worth the $12 and all the time it took. This is fairly minor, but several years ago, 7 to 11 ran a promotion, where all of the big gulp cups had a sticker on them, that had some kind of prize on them. The sticker had those little, wavy blue and red lines, that you had to look at through 3D glasses to read, so, in theory, you had no idea, what you had won until the clerk looked at it at checkout. Most of the prizes were crap, stuff like 25 cents off of a sketchy hot dog. But, one of the prizes was a free big gulp, so if you got that one, your big gulp was free. I memorized the pattern of blue and red lines fished through the cups, until I got the right one, and got free soda pop for about 2 months, until the promotion ended. Excuse me while I go check my insulin. When vending machines first started accepting credit cards you could swipe your card, select a drink, and when the little drink pod starts moving to collect your drink hit cancel. The cancel button would stop the card transaction, but not the machine so you could get free drinks. Was a sad day, when it stopped working. Around Halloween, Peep's website had a code, to get 20% off at checkout for any order. It ended up working on all items, including gift cards. So I first bought a $3 gift card, then I used that gift card to buy a $4 gift card etc. Until I got to an $80 gift card. I then bought $80 worth of Peep's with $3. 
I told one of my friends and he did the same thing, but got his gift card up to $1,600. My friend works for a company where he spends the entire week traveling and staying in hotels and he can expense any hotel. Because of this my roommate and I listed our air mattress on Airbnb for $150 and he's the only one that ever stays there. He's only even in town once every couple weeks, but whenever he is we have a small house party entirely on the company's dime. My college didn't put any dates on our student IDs. No graduation year, no expiration date, nothing. As a result, I kept using it to get student discounts for years after I graduated, mostly the 15% off J. Crew discount. There was a Papa John's coupon for 50% off, if the official PJ Twitter at we eated you. I found the code looking through their website. I got half off pizza for a year and a half. Back in the 80s, raffle for a car had write your own entries. Printed off thousands of pages of entries on my printer. One car. Unfortunately I was too young to drive. My sister totaled it before I got my license. Easy come. Years ago when online poker was a thing in the US, there were sites that let you look at statistics on other players. They'd give you like one free look, but I realized you could just manually change the player's name in the link and get unlimited free statistics from them. I used it a lot to see if someone was a good player or not before sitting down at tables with dollar sign 20 plus buy-ins. There's these 3 Dunkin Donuts in my area that let you buy coffee cards basically you pay $200 for the card and can come through any part of the day, however much you want a day, and get an any size coffee for a year. Well my mom bought one last year and it had expired, she bought another one this year and it looks exactly the same as the old one, they took no effort into changing the card at all, so my mom gave me her old one and I get free coffee whenever I want. Edit, they are not scannable cards or gift cards. It's literally just a pink piece of paper in the shape of a card that has the Dunkin Donuts label on it and the locations where it's valid and a manager's signature. It does have the date it expires on there real small, but they have never once checked my card. They only ask me to flash it at them, so I guess the day they ask to inspect it the jig is up. The online community that played Diablo 2 created its own form of currency by trading valuable in-game items for earrings called Soja Stones of Jordan. For instance, if you wanted that rare plus 80 TACK power armor, you would buy it for 12 Sojas. Anyway, I figured out that there was a discrepancy between the worth of an Sojan game and its actual money to re worth on eBay same with magic items, but in reverse. I would buy Sojas on eBay for cheap, go in-game and trade them for air magic items. Then I would sell those magic items on eBay for way more than I paid for the sodges. I made enough money to pay for college books and other living expenses. Blizzard tried to capitalize on this when they released Diablo 3, but they failed miserably by regulating the market too much. The system worked in D2 because it was only regulated by the supply and demand of the users. Worked at Walmart. Employees can't take advantage of mismatched prices. C3DS XL labeled at $70 when they first came out. Friend is with me. Hand him money to pay for it. Get new 3DS XL for $70. At my local movie theater, you could get a small drink for $2. 50 or a large drink for $3. 50 and large gets unlimited refills. Or you could get a Sobe tea for $2. 50, but they didn't give you the Sobe bottle because they wanted to avoid any broken glass incidents. So they poured the Sobe into the large cup. Boom. Unlimited large drink refills. I saved several dollars that way. My son attends speech and occupational therapy every week. Usually it is a $35 copay for each therapy, but if I do them on the same day I only have to pay the copay once. Saves me about $140 a month. Edited to clarify, since it came across like my child was a therapist. In elementary school we had the accelerated reading art program. You would read a book, take a test on the computer, and be awarded points, based on how well you did. At the end of the year you could buy things at the bookstore with the points you accumulated. I had just finished reading Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and got a perfect score on the test. 
the computer was only supposed to allow you to take the test once, but I figured out you could take that specific Harry Potter book unlimited times. I racked up so many points, and was never found out. Edit, apparently a lot of people had an R point scam. Who older thought Reddit users would compete for fake points? I worked in a call center during college. Our main performance measure was the number of donations solicited per contact. If the person didn't answer, or hung up immediately, it didn't count against you. I discovered a bug where, if I blew into the microphone, just as the phone started to ring, it would register in the computer system as a no answer and dial the next number. I rode this out for several months, before I got tired of blowing my microphone for 8 hours a day and quit. In the 80s Chuck E. Cheese's didn't shred the tickets you get out of their games and used to buy toys, candy etc. My friends and I were biking one day behind a strip mall practicing our wheelies and jumps. We saw a worker throwing a garbage bag of tickets into the dumpster behind Chuck E. Cheese. We grabbed it, and then started circling back about once a week. Garbage bags and garbage bags full of tickets. We were doing so well, one of my friend's parents got in on it. She would take the minivan behind there, and have her kids load up. And this is why tickets are now shredded. I think I still, have a huge stockpile of frisbees, and stuffed animals in my parents attic somewhere. 